possession friendly against Uva Stabia. It sounds like uh, Spalletti is going to just sort of monitor him for the, the final few days of training and then make a decision. Uh, but with that, why don't we get to the starting lineups? I, I think we've kind of knocked it all out uh, with just the discussion of the various different players. But very quickly, who do you think is going to start uh, for Inter against Napoli? Um, so obviously we'll have Onana starting in goals. The back three will be Skriniar, Bastoni, and Acerbi. You can almost guarantee that. Uh, Denzel Dumfries will start on the right-hand side. Federico Di Marco, who's probably been our best player this season, will start on the left. Um, Barella will be obviously our box-to-box midfielder, um, starting in that midfield three. That will also be occupied by Hakan Chandanolu, who'll play that little bit more of an advanced role if Brozovic comes back. Slightly more reserved role in a register sense if Mikatarian is on the pitch. So depending on Brozovic or Mikatarian being the last midfielder in there will sort of also dictate Hakan's position and the way that he plays the game. And up top, we're going to start with Lukaku and Dzeko, if I'm not mistaken. I'll be very surprised if anything in that lineup changes. Um, if there's any sort of late fatigue or injuries, then that obviously that comes into play. But I don't think you'll see too much different from what I've just described there. Okay, yeah, that's pretty much what I was expecting as well, especially listening to you talk about all the other players. For Napoli, there are a few questions, including whether we line up in a 4-3-3, which is our usual formation, or whether we go back to the 4-2-3-1. In either case, we'll play with a back four in front of Alex Meret. I mentioned the sort of doubts at center back. I think we'll have Kim and Juan Jesus, but I definitely wouldn't be surprised if it's Kim and Rachmani, which is easily our, our strongest center back pairing. It really comes down to, you know, do you play a better player who's out of form or a worse player who's in form? And I'm leaning more towards Juan Jesus at the moment, at least, but that can definitely change over the next couple of days. We'll play Mario Rui at left back and Giovanni Di Lorenzo at right back. The midfield will depend on the formation, but in either case, I expect Stanislav Lobotka and Angisa to start. If we play in a 4-2-3-1, then they'll play as that double pivot. Now, I think Spalletti will only use the 4-2-3-1 if he wants to get Giacomo Raspadori into the starting eleven. Raspadori certainly made a convincing argument that he should be starting with how well he played in our friendlies. If you include the match against Juve Stabia, he scored seven goals over the five matches. So he's he's a type of guy that I've mentioned this on the pod before, but it seems like he has one sort of mentality, whether mm. it's playing in the Champions League or for the Azzurri or in a friendly, he just plays the same way, which I really, really like about him. Um, especially because historically Napoli have not exactly been the most sort of mentally strong club. If we play in a 4-3-3, then we have a similar conundrum with the third midfielder as we have at center back. Zielinski is the strongest option, but he's only had really one week of proper training. The alternatives are Tanguy and Dombele and Elif Elmas, who are, again, more fit but lower quality Given those reports that I mentioned about the Juve Stabia match, I think we will see our regular 4-3-3 with Lobotka as the Regista behind Zielinski and Ngisa. And then depending on the situation, I think Zielinski will be replaced by either Raspadori or Ndombele. So if we need to score, then we probably bring on Raspadori, switch yeah. to a 4-2-3-1. If we have a lead um, or if we're just protecting a draw even, then maybe Ndombele replaces him in the midfield at some point in the second half. And then I think the front three is fairly predictable. Kvaratshelia will play on the left wing, Politano on the right wing, and Victor Osimen will play uh, up top. Okay, so let's close the pod quickly with some predictions. How do you think this match is going to play out? Oh, man, before we do that, what time is this game kickoff wise for me? Because this is, <laughs> I think be it's a the final the game of the round, if I'm not mistaken. Oh, 6 45 in the morning. That's easy. That's an easy wake up time. So, <laughs> 6 45 a.m. Thursday, January 5 for me. So, I've still got four, four full days until this one. Um, look, seeing as though it's in Napoli or just right there, that reason alone. I can't expect to come away with three points. I'd love no, to no, see. No, it's, no, it's at the Miata. It's in. Is in, it at the Miata? Yeah. Oh, it is too. I'm looking at this return fixture. Sorry. That's it is good. at the Miata. All right. Well, oh, man. 
<laughs> I'd, I'd love to be able to sit here and say this is the game where we turn the season around and make sure that we know as a bare minimum that we're going to be a top four fight side this season. We might be able to scare you guys at the top a little bit, but even a win for me wouldn't put us anywhere near back into a title challenge. For me, this season, like I've always called it on my channel, is a top four and vibe season. It's a top four and cup, cup run vibe season. We just need to make sure we finish in the top four because finishing outside of a Champions League group zone and stage in 2023 onwards is a disaster. It feels like receiving a ban or a sanction. Like when you can't qualify for the Champions League, you need to rethink your entire club strategy going forward for the short term. So for me, three points will be celebrated heavily because I think that's a big, big way to make sure that we will have enough points at the end of the calendar year to finish in the top four. In terms of just this game, I can just see it being, I can see both coaches who have got a set of balls on them, but they won't show them unless they're really forced to, man. Spalletti and Inzaghi, first game of the season, New Year's hangover and everything. If you gave, if you offered Spalletti and Inzaghi a point, they would break bread at the table right now and be happy with it, man. So I'm gonna go with, I'm gonna go with a very slow first half, zero zero half time, and I think that we're gonna see one one full time. If not, it's gonna be a Napoli victory by the sole goal, one nil. But if we can come out of it just with a point, at least we can reset our expectations again and go on and perform as well as we can domestically for the end of the season. But to any Inter fans watching, uh, so to any Napoli fans watching you on this, don't expect me to be here with my chest saying that Inter's going to win. It's going to be all good because, yeah, I think that Inter's still got a lot, a lot of rough things to deal with this season. Okay, well, first of all, you're preaching to the choir in terms of top <laughs> four because it's not fun to start a season with that being your objective. Just get back into the Champions League. So we know yeah. we know that pain all too well. But mm -hmm. I completely agree with you in terms of your prediction. I think we're going to see that rust of having not played collectively, sort of competitively for a couple of months. Uh, so I think it's going to be low scoring. I, my prediction was going to be exactly the same. 1-1 one, one draw. I was going to go with goals from Osimen and Jekyll. Yeah, obviously I want to win, uh, but I think I would be content with the draw at the Meazza. Mm -hmm. Inter have been a very difficult opponent for Napoli over the past five seasons. Uh, I tweeted about this earlier this week, but we have a record of only one win, four draws, and five losses in uh, five losses in the last ten Serie A meetings. I mean, there was the Coppa Italia win, wow. which it wasn't even. I mean, that was in the Gattuso era, and we just barely pulled out oh, that one nil win. Um, mm. The one win in Serie A was on May 19th, 2019. And as friend of the pod at Zuri Fan Phil pointed out, our last win at the Meazza was in April of 2017. So it's been a long time since we've won there. Yeah. That said, I mean, our last four meetings have been very, very competitive. Uh, last season, there was the 1 1 draw where Insignia scored from the penalty spot, and then Jekyll equalized early in the second half. There was the 3 2 Inter win, which was the match where, unfortunately, Osimen broke his face. And yeah, we almost came back into that one. We were down 3 1, and then Merton scored a beautiful goal. And then we missed two huge chances late in that match. There was the Mario Rui header that Handanovic yeah. just got enough to <sighs> tip it onto the roof of the goal. And then Merton's had a, a, a sort of an open volley that he skied over the bar. Two seasons ago, there was another 1 1 draw, and then there was a 1 0 Inter win. That was the game where. Inter were awarded a penalty kick, which Lukaku converted. It was the only goal of the match. But before he did, Insignia said something to the to the official and got himself sent off. So we played the most of that match down a man. So even though we haven't won recently, I, I think they've been competitive enough to for that to not be terribly concerning for me. And irrespective of all that, I mean, it's an entirely different Napoli team. So I don't put too much weight into the past results. What concerns me more is the fact that this is probably a must-win match for Inter, you know, if you want to have any hopes of staying in the Scudetto race. At the very yeah. least, it's a must-not-lose. And um, as we talked about in Part 1, Inter have already lost five matches this season. And I looked into, just because I apparently have way too much time on my hands, but <laughs> <laughs> I looked into, you know, how often the Scudetto winner happened to lose more than five matches and as it turns out, if we only look at sort of the three points for a win era, it's only happened uh, three times. 
it actually, if you extend that further out, it's only happened five times in the last 60 seasons. Um, wow. Even if you adjust for sort of the lower teams. So if you'd sort of take an average five divided by 38 and apply that to the number of, of matches, it's only happened five times in the last 60 seasons. But that I would take with a bit of grain of salt because, you know, I think in the, the two points for a win era, teams played a lot more to not lose than they did to win. So for sure, I'll just look at sort of the last 30 seasons, but that's still, you know, three out of 30 is, is a pretty low rate. So yeah. for me, it's a, a really, really important match for Inter. Um, finally, I, I think Napoli need to watch out for two things in particular. One is uh, Inter set piece from the corner kick where they play the ball to the first post. I've noticed that, uh that's that's done fairly successfully i think their goals against bologna and atalanta from that routine perisic scored that way against us last season and then the other thing is that napoli is that napoli need to uh play the full 90 minutes one thing despite the struggles about this inter team is that they don't quit um we've already seen inter win two matches in stoppage time first against torino and then against fiorentina yep so that's all I wanted to cover today. Um, Anthony, before I let you go, any final thoughts on this match? No, I think it's going to be, as you said, it's it's the blockbuster match of the round. It's going to be huge. Uh, you're going to see a lot of rust, a lot of dust, but these are some of the best players in the league. So I, I am really, really looking forward to having Serie A back, having culture back, and to be able to start it against um, Napoli. It's going to be huge, man. So, yeah. Let's just hope for, um, for a let's hope for a game that's not too heavily impacted by officiating and refereeing decisions because we've seen too many big games in Italy go pear shaped from that man. Yeah, that's always the one thing that no matter what club you uh, you support, <laughs> that's the one thing we all unanimously agree on. Let's just hope that the officials don't uh, have a big say in in whatever the outcome is. But Anthony, thank you so much for taking the time uh, to speak to me on New Year's Day. Bro, thank you so much for having me, Joe. It was really awesome to see you again. Always, always love um, talking culture with you. And yeah, uh, I'm sure we'll message each other after the game. But whatever happens, let's hope that both... Of, I'm firmly, firmly hoping that both of our clubs finish in the top four at the end of the season. I've got some family ties to Napoli and I've always sort of just enjoyed them in the background as much as I possibly can being an Inter fan. So thank you once again and thank you to all the listeners. I really appreciate it. Awesome. And thank you. It was, it was my pleasure. Certainly. Uh, you can find Anthony on Twitter at Ant Privatera, and you can find the inter worldwide um, page at inter WW. You can find me on Twitter at Joe underscore Fisket D five, and you can find the podcast on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, and Patreon at Forza Napoli pod. I will be back very soon to review this match and to preview our next one, which is only a few days later against Sam I believe that's on Sunday. But until then, I'm Joe Fischetti, Forza Napoli sempre.